Hello everyone and welcome back for the break. Thank you so much for sticking with us because we do have one final game tonight. It is a knockout round of course as well. So we're going to be looking at Florida versus Optic Gaming. It's the rematch. I think it's the rematch that I think Florida definitely won. Um, you know, Florida Mutineers have been on the up and I think, honestly, Optic were kind of that, like, low-key speed bump that they weren't expecting with that 3-2 finish that they did have last time. Uh, Miles, what do you make of this rematch and, and how these two teams are probably going to go into it? Well, look, it couldn't have been closer the first time this came around. It was a game five. It was round 11 in the search and destroy. And yeah, it was a blowout round for Florida to get the win. But at the same time, we are looking at a team that is on the rise. You know, Optic Gaming, Los Angeles, things are looking up, Florida. The Meta's not exactly favoring them too hard. I mean, push comes to shove. We could see a win here coming out of OGLA. I think it's a couple of it's a couple of decisions here or there. It's a couple of mistakes either side, and we could be seeing a very, very different look going in the semifinals tomorrow. Uh, excuse my dog in the background. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's really he's a bit he's a big fan of, uh, he's of, of both of these teams. Yeah, 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 he's very excited for this rematch. Um, chance looking at <laughs> looking at how this three two went down last time. Um, is there anything that's kind of standing out to you right now? Now that we may see a repeat of uh, in terms of our, our modes going forward. Obviously, we don't have our maps present yet. Uh, maybe a little bit later oh. on. But is there anything right now you think that maybe we'll see Optic Gaming taking once again? Well, I'm cheating. I got sent the map, so oh. I actually know it's three of the maps are going to be the same, like Armaza, Hardpoint, Gunner cool. S&D, and Piccadilly S&D are all the exact same, right? So those teams were comfortable making sure they get those back. It was the Hardpoint that Florida lost. They gave a shot on St. Petra, where they now have a, a one in six overall record. They didn't want to run that one back against Optics, so we're switching that one to a Zier Cave. And then the Domination, Miles, I'm sure you remember this very well. It was St. Petrograd. Florida's been playing it constantly, and they obliterated Optic. They got the triple cap set up multiple times beat them by 50 60 70 points whatever it was optic said no thank you and now we're going to hackney yard instead so it's one of those situations we talk about for optic brand new team it's tough to try to pick and ban against them because you don't know exactly where they're going to be at so adjustments have been made you know uh, my dog's just saying thank god they changed that domination up my Every goodness <laughs> um, let's move on to game field keys to victory right now for florida miles uh, what have these mutineers got to do to take this over the line well well, Florida have got to convert those assault rifle kills into map pressure, then control. So again, Florida, we know they can slay out. We know they can do a lot. But again, that map pressure is keeping the enemy team off balance and then controlling them from, you know, where they spawn, you know, pushing the objective, making the most of that one is going to be crucial in the hard point. Skies and Pharaohs were plus 34 in hard point versus London. We want to see a continued strong showing from Farah and Skies. Two dangerous players. I'd also like to keep a big eye on Havoc. Havoc was a fantastic addition, again, to the, uh, to the big, big win there against LAG. Uh, sorry, against OGLA, Ogla. Uh, shout out T-Man in the first <laughs> time they met up, met, met up. So, Havoc, yeah, I want to see him go big. Awakening's obviously going to be disgusting, but Skies and Pharaoh, they're the ARs you want to see perform today. Definitely. Let's move on to the game. Your keys to victory for Optic Gaming. Chance, please let me know how are these guys going to do it today? Uh, I mean, I think in, in my head, at least, the primary thing I'm thinking about is the pick and bans, right? You literally just played this team yesterday. You can then go back and look at it like, all right, what are the things that went wrong? The main thing, of course, being that St. Patrick guy domination to say, all right, that is clear cut. We're not going to win that map against this team, not at this point in time. So that is a clear cut adjustment that got made. And then, of course, if you're leaving both of the search and destroyers in, that means now you can go back to the drawing board and be like, all right, here's how we lost this round in this situation. Here's what player X needs needs to do instead and now you can actually take a great deal of time of course only in the past like 12 hours whatever it's been but making sure that you can build your game plan custom for the team you're going against so i think honestly uh job done from optic in the uh the keys to victory regard now they got to execute their plan for sure i'm excited to see how drazza and hollow will actually fare in this next matchup they have a lot to prove to their team and fans uh but gents i think we're getting it getting it going now so i'm gonna hand it over to you Thank you very, very much, Lottie. Here we go. The rematch. And it is a knockout nonetheless. Can the Mutineers get it done twice in a row? That's a tough one, man. I mean, we've said this time and time again. It's hard for a team to be beaten twice in the same tournament. Game five, round 11 again last time. Will we go the distance today? Only time will tell. In the Ramaza, we go for the first map. Florida Mutineers versus Optic Gaming LA or Ogla. I'm going to try to run with Ogla as much as I possibly can towards the end of the season. I love saying it out loud. Ogla will be making their way to the hard point now in Florida. Nice shots again from Havoc running in. M4 just off the rip here. Nice nades coming through from Hollow, trying to make that hard point a little bit more dangerous. And you can see the setup here from this Rugs position. Trophy goes down from Skies, very early grab there. And we're going to see a little bit of hard point time now go the way of the mutant is. 
and, and just to sort of backtrack it before we really delve into the gameplay and just make sure that we're on the same page, Optic for this series, like they're currently in that foot race for the CDL standings to try to maintain that top eight spot. And obviously we just saw Paris get an extra 10 points. That foot race is neck and neck between those two teams. So if Paris executed against a team that is higher up in the CDL standings, well, Optic is gonna need to do the same thing or it just puts more pressure on them at the next event. So Optic, maybe not desperate for this win, but it would be massive if they were able to pull it off. That's such a nice win though. Like again, it's not, it's not essential in terms of like their campaign towards champs, but to get a win over Florida is, I mean, that's a good yeah, one. That throws, so that's confidence in the, in the disarray. That just sets things on fire somewhat, but here we go. Awakening nice nade, keeping himself alive in a very precarious position. It's Florida Mutineers. The last you know, couple of moments, they've had spawns sitting controlled by that second half point towards the electronic shop. Awakening down low, putting in the damage, trying to find some kills here before going down. It's going to fall to Havoc. It's going to be that first player up for the Mutineers here in the electronic shop. Grazo makes his way through, finds that first kill, gets himself a second. That's a lovely bit of work from the newcomer. And <laughs> he's just spraying praying at that point in time. <laughs> as his little cell phones go flying. Hollow not as able to have an impact. Frosty comes out and gets two, almost a third. Slasher answers back, and it's a nice trade either way for both of these teams going into the second hard point. I mean, I'm having a ton of deja vu because keep in mind, we, me and you casted this series yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> it was literally on this hill. The first time we were spectating Draza, he was doing 360s inside of this hill That's looking for mad. kills. So just a little uh, a fun symmetrical moment. But either way, Optic Gaming, uh, a fairly solid job done on these two hills. They're able to build themselves a little bit of a lead. But now we go into that ever so present P3 hill. Florida get there first. And look at the amount of map control Florida currently have just to make sure they keep these Optic members at bay. That's the same when you go back to like how this series played out yesterday. I mean, exactly the same things happened. OGLA Florida, they kept it very, very close either side. It was the second set of rotations where the mutineers started to really pick up speed and pick up that lead. Will we see the same thing happen here today? Squavo trying to find something in the back. Can't get it done. Nice pinch comes through. Slasher M4 upstairs. Signatures on his gun. Flexing at all times. You do love to see it. Back to there again. If he can maintain some degree of top press, top mid control, that pressure we talked about. This is Nameless' keys to victory here. We're looking to see that mid-map pressure, that control over the map. And so far, so good for Slasher. And number five, you just watched Havoc. He just dipped so hard. Watch the spawns now. For the Florida Mutineers, will they spawn? No, they don't. Havoc did all that hard work to run to the far left side of the map. He's just been taken care of by TJ. Cuts him down. Mutineers are still trapped on the right-hand side of the map. Still though, another player able to get uh, through the little setup that was going to be had and Awakening able to find the first kill. So they set up the, the trap, so to speak, that Optic is working on. Maybe not perfect, but you see Awakening gets dealt with and oh, how the turntables, right? It was the Florida keeping Optic at bay from the last till. Don't let him get anywhere near it. Now Optic, they have this setup for Florida. Uh, I mean, what? They have to win maybe a full set of gunfights and then 10 seconds later, they can get to the hill to contest. It is not an easy road ahead of them, but maybe the clearance is there. Draws an out. Just gets clean cut, killed by Ferro there. Slasher upstairs, and the aggression from the Mutineers. They have won every single individual gunfight at every single corner they could have possibly won in this situation. Quavo, yeah, you're gone, dude. What a break that was from the Mutineers. It was basically perfect from start to finish. Skies is going to get a little bit of hollow trouble now. Awakening on the trade. One from stuff from him. 17 and 6 overall for Awakening. As Mutineers are starting to walk away with this one ever so slightly. And now Frosty looking towards the next hard point chance. I mean, it's starting to, uh, starting to get a little bit ahead of themselves already. I mean, it's not exactly an exact repeat of what we saw yesterday, but Mutineers are actually getting the party started a little sooner than before. Yeah, definitely one of those moments where uh, occasionally Florida just sort of flipped that switch and the game started to get out of control. And frankly, I mean, you're looking at Awakening, it had 17 kills. His call with technical support must have gone as good as it possibly could. And well, now you got to be worried about Frosty heating up as well. He's on a seven spree. It takes Hollow to shut him down. And Optic Gaming, maybe a little bit of love inside the hill, able to get some time. But you see the smoke was in the hill. That means the flood is on. And now it is just chaos in the hard point. Chaos and currently Optic seem to be winning it. They've managed to get quite a lot out of this. There's 30 seconds remaining. Florida Mutineers, it looks like they may give this one up. In the final 20 seconds of time, we'll go the way of OGLA, and that's a fantastic consolation prize right now as we battle for control of the next one. Frosty, beautiful made one for heads-up play. Going towards the top of this bridge once again, and it's going to be Slasher upstairs by Rugs. Getting tags in a Frosty, not able to quite fully get the kill yet, but there it is. The nade comes through. 
cleans that one up. And now we have a semblance of control for OGLA. They still have to do what they can to get in towards the top of construction. Again, a very powerful position. Overlook not only this hard point, but it gives you a degree of fight over towards the second as well. So Pharaoh, identifying the importance of that position, he's going to be locking this one down for as long as he can. You got Optic actually swarming like flies. You see Farrah Welton does his job, is able to cape there, draws him. Well, there you go, swarming like flies, but getting decimated around the point. So you talk about a, a pendulum-type game, the, the lead exchanging back and forth, and Optic, frankly, now you got your work cut out for it. Pavel somehow got to that hill. Do not know how he pulled it off, but he gets taken care of. And now for Optic, you got to get past Awakening every single time Ooh. it is on this hill. The man streaks out and even forces the team kill towards the end. P1 has been run by the young Wake. Oh man, he did a great job there. Farrow is now going to pick up the final moments before being dropped. But over towards next we go. Frosty in position. A moment of quiet and calm before that hard point flips open. OGLA nowhere really to be found. They're making their way through the middle of the map. They could get a lot closer to this hard point a lot quicker, but they're going to fight through Skies. He's going to be up next. Farrow's going to watch mid slasher. Ooh, 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 that was a big win in the 1v1. OGLA They've managed to cut their losses. They barely lost a man in the push. TJ's going to go down to Awakening. The big wave once again from behind. Gets his second. And the third is going to be there for him as well. Delightful shots from Awakening. Makes the back of the map safe for now. But no. OGLA still keep the push alive. Can they bring the fight directly to the hard point? It's been a great 30 seconds already for the Mutineers. But here they come. Havoc's up next. Shots are there through the smoke. Dras is going to get the quick trades. And once again, we're back in on point. OGLA. And they get the remaining 20. And how impressive is that as well? Like, as soon as Awakening picks up the triple kill, that is basically a, a nearly hopeless situation. After gaming, two members left the round, and even they started to fall. But somehow, with the close enough spawn, they're able to get back inside, and they are just trying to keep this game as tight as possible. But we have been in this situation before, and at some point in the year, we will be in this situation again. Florida, they have a ton of map clearance. They're over towards the new hill very early, and you got players like Pharaoh, the roaming slayers, just keeping them at bay. Yeah, doing a great job. Those roaming slayers, we talk about them time to time. Massive impact already from Pharaoh. 25 and 18. Three in a row. There's number... Whoa, that's number four. Oh, man, I can't believe I called that one a little too early. But still, 200 points now crossed for the Florida Mutineers. OGLA slowed down somewhat. We're staying on center ball with Ferry there for the moment, but this is the overhead view of the barbershop hardpoint. That large open courtyard space now. Hollow and Kenny trying to make their way forward. Cut down. It's a kill box. And now Ferro, that roaming slayer once again, crossing over the map, making sure there is an open lane for his team to work with. And could we see the success that Havoc couldn't find in that first set? No, he's dead. There you go. <laughs> Chance, it's so hard to get out of barbershop. It's very, very difficult. Yeah. I mean, even still, though, that is, that is a perfect hill, right? Full 60, you're going to get every single point available. You're going to jump up the lead. And, like, this is one of those situations where Florida, if they want, could just rotate to new. I know there's 58 seconds left on the hill, but if they wanted to, they could do it if they need. But, of course, well, they just want to fight and win the game here, if at all possible. But pressure on Optic again. They lost on Ramazza to this team yesterday. It is a dire situation here on map number one again. And Awakening's looking to push the 30 kill mark. TJ managed to get one here as a consolation point. It's going to be a contest downstairs. TJ got to bring that MP5 down low. And that's exactly what he's going to do. Nice clone to Awakening. Can they keep the pressure up? Number eight. It's going to be Slasher already looking towards the next hard point. 30 seconds out. Skies can't get it down on the first. Awakening doing what he can to just make that center of the map as safe as possible. Pharaoh with a massive win on a Kenny. That's a big kill in 20 seconds time. That hard point will be up in exactly that position. And he can just sit in it and win the game for his squad. Awakening now, lining up for this one. We are going to see the final seven seconds, and every moment has to go to OGLA at this point in time, really. But they still have to battle for the next one, and this could be it. The ruins, quite literally the end of the hard point, if Florida can hold this one. And here we go, OGLA, try to make the break. Slasher, he goes down. TJ and Hollow find the kills of their own as we make our way forward. It's onto Awakening, straight and off spawn. Trophy systems go down, and it's a decent hold already, as OGLA, chance they're still in this. They're holding this one, Draza gets two. Now it's about that contest time as well. Frankly, for Optic, it's less air. It's more about keeping the other team out. The more you need to be inside. But now Optic starting to fall. Draza just looking for kills. He connects with the first. And the smoke's still inside, causing confusion. It's not over just yet. And again, 239 to the 215, 16 and climbing. We're already, Florida Mutineers are like, okay, we've kind of, we've taken a few hits here. We do have to look across map and go towards the next one. Slasher is identifying that as well. Frosty makes safe in the middle of the map. This is going to come down to the wire. 
Bobo making his way in from behind. Again, doing what he can to keep that hard point safe as possible. OGLA will get the remaining time. And now it's going to be a battle. It's basically the start of the map all over again. One team pushes from rugs. One team pushes from construction. Who's going to be able to get it done? Frosty finds one with the nades, and this could be it. The next hard point flips. It's over to Bridge, and OGLA have got time for now. Ten points for the win. TJ staying alive. Big hip fire finds one. Can he get another one of the Frosty? No, he can't. And again, the contest. We've still got someone from OGLA in position. Five seconds down for the win. You gotta go, Florida! You gotta go! Get onto the point! Get the contest! Hold the line as long as you possibly can. Awakening goes down. There's still the contest is there. It's gonna be havoc. Can he find something on the flank? It would be huge, but no, he can't. Frosty's gotta climb the ladder. Someone's gotta get into that position as quick as they can. Is there someone to contest? No! OGLA take map number one. Take map number one, and that is, uh, I imagine with the player cams, you're going to see a bunch of smiles across the board. This game started, and there were so many situations like this one on this hill. It's like when Awaken is picking up three big kills that it just seems like Optic aren't going to be able to get enough pressure towards the hill, but they're able stop. to fight tooth and nail and get just enough. Uh, Optic putting in work to get that map one win. Great stuff all around. Whew. We'll start to the day, mate. We'll start to the day, start to the series. Apologies there, I, uh, I think I had a little bit of an audio issue for myself, but whew, what a great way to get it going. We've got a replay coming in from the final few moments of that map, and uh, Holo is still just loving life in that little disco room. I need, I have questions. Okay, I, I really do have questions. I, I, I'm, I'm not quite sure where to place them right now. I feel like he's a busy man, but if anyone can tell me what the deal is with Holo's lighting setup, uh, we've got a ton of tweets. Again, thank you all for the uh, strange pre-match rituals. Some of you are very, very unique individuals, I'll say that much, but this was the final few moments chance of that crazy hard point, and what a way to get it done for a GLA. And there was just a stretch of plays towards the end. I think it was Kenny's perspective that we were on where he actually started the rotation over towards the first hill and then realized, well, Florida, I guess, actually can win it here. He wraps all the way back through the bottom of the map, picks up kills by a tunnel, and in that same life then goes back up top mid and finds kills and works himself over towards the P1. The nades, by the way, from Optic Gaming on point. It was to break that final hill. They got two nade kills for the intro, so they had the advantage at the start of the hill. And generally just a, a crazy game right four out of five players from the side of optic go negative draws was the only one that was positive and it was only by two kills and they still managed to get that win you got pharaoh dropping 37 for the l awakening 32 for the l and again it was a run back they played this map yesterday florida bullied them on it but this time mistakes were made and optic that early advantage potentially could go a long way stats on your screen wonderful stuff already and again close as they can come florida mutineers just slow to the punch as ogla take the lead in the series and this is not what we saw in the first match between these two again you've joined us this is the last match of the day a knockout match between ogla and the florida mutineers on our air force quick scope will be on your screen in just a moment again the florida mutineers one of the finest teams in the league looking to go for the three p back to back to back home series victories and again there could be Oh, there could be more that separates these two squads right now. And again, that overall KD, I mean, that's something to look at. I mean, if you look at the across the board, the quick scope chance, Florida, it's just they take the cake in every single ca category. Maps now and modes brought to you by the US Air Force. And this is the series laid out before us chance. Going to the search and destroy now. It's going to be a gun runner. And again, Piccadilly for the game five when we get there. And let's face it, we could. But we will see an Azir cave for that map number four. And again, maps one, two, and five are runbacks, right? So like the fact that Florida won their Mazda last time, now Optic gets that win to kick off the series. Now you go into a gun runner where they've already played each other. Optic has been able to go back to the drawing boards. And of course, the same thing can be said about Florida. But if you talk about potential advantages in this series, like Optic might be on their way to something promising because the domination where they got bullied out, they switched the map to Hackney Yard. So there's been a, a clear cut practice. Scrims are better. You're making better picks and better like Optic, it, not done yet, but potentially on their way yeah. uh, to at least fighting Paris on that little foot race they got. Foot race there through the standings. And again, new look Optic Gaming, of course, Draza and Hollow coming in to fill the positions of Chino and Dashi. So far, so good for those two young players. Again, they've been brought out of, the, out of seemingly nowhere. Florida Mutineers have not made a change in quite some time. And again, the formula has worked for them, awakening the absolute star-studded pickup they made. Helped them pick up two home series championships. They hadn't dropped a series until earlier today where the Royal Ravens get it done at their very own home series. And what a series that was. But here we go. Game's almost underway. Awakening goes to wash his hands as part of his pre-match ritual. 
No game fuel on those mitts. Oh, game fuel, oh my god. No gamer grip on those mitts, excuse me. Although, all things considered, a bit of game fuel in your hands would be quite sticky. Who knows, it could be quite good, you know? In those uh, high-pressure environments. That. That, that's like the wrong kind of sticky, right? Yeah. Like there's like the annoying kind, <laughs> and then there's the kind that gives you better grip, and I'm not sure a uh, type of soda is going to be the, uh, <laughs> the play there. Still, here we go. Gun runner search and destroy. Cool, we've had some good gun runners today. We had some good gun runners yesterday as well. And now, for these teams, a huge win in that first map for OGLA. Buy themselves a bit of a safety net to work with. You can let the search go, you can potentially let the uh, domination go, which could be a little harder, and still have a fighting chance in the series. But here we go. Forward of Mutineers on offense. They're going to be in that first. And it looks like a little bit of love towards B, but it's quite a deep push. It looks like a forest entry here for the Mutineers. OGLA stacked in towards A, not to be counter here whatsoever. They haven't really made the greatest read, and they haven't seen anyone on approach just yet. Well, yeah, this happened yesterday, though. Optic tried to triple flank, and it was Skies that ended up spotting it out. This time, you got Pharaoh as the, the second gun looking over, and actually Frosty ready for it, too. So this is Florida making the read. They saw no pressure over towards B, waiting for this flank, oh. but maybe the timing. Oh. Perfect. They look away in Optic Cross. It could not have been better. It was written in the stones, and now you can see Optic have already made it across. They've snuck on through. Draz are going to be leading the charge with the MP5 hollow right up behind him with the M4. And there's the shots. The bomb's going to go down. Draz is like, we know. We were looking at the flank. We know there was no one there. How did that happen? Quavo finds one of the front as well. Hollow in from behind. It really be from your own spawn. The sky is now in a one versus four. It's essentially impossible. He's going to make a fight of it. He's going to try. So I'm do some funny things the other day with his knife in the round that he did lose to OGLA. But again, this seems all but impossible. Draz has got the perfect angle in, the bomb's going to get picked up. This guy's, I mean, he's going for it. Like, he's got 15 seconds to kill three players. I think they may or may not be looking at him, waiting for this one. No one's seen him yet. The clock is ticking, dude. What? <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna run up to they don't him. Want, they, yeah, they, they did the same thing. They don't want the kills. It's Gunrunner is such an offensively sided uh -huh. map. And again, this is thank you to all the pros that made this comment when Skies got the uh, like the triple knife, whatever it was, a few rounds ago. You want offense on this map? It is offensively favored. It's sixty some odd percent to whatever. So the more kills you get, means you're gonna be in defense for round eleven. They don't want that, so they're not gonna kill the guys as soon as they know they get that guaranteed I mean, round win. Dude, win it in six, right? That's, it. That's what I'm saying. Just, just win it in six. Like, like, <laughs> don't make it that complicated. No, but, but again, it, it, it comes down to the details, right? We've seen stuff like that in past games. Really, Optic has been the only team that's given us that like clear cut of a look uh, of at least that concept. Yep. Of course, now in this round, it's already 2v3. And Optic, well, a little bit split on the map. Nice for the for the awakening. Makes it 2v2. 2 versus 1 now, Skies gets his kill. Slasher is now going to have to do what he can in this 1 versus 2 situation, and Skies may be a little too eager to push his way towards the top of that bomb site. Pharaoh watching the deep flank in towards A. Should reposition now. Slash is still bombless. 50 seconds remaining. Plenty of time for him to roam around the map and maybe catch these 1v1 fights out, but there's Skies. Again, incredible timing between these two teams. They just about miss each other there. And now... And I think... Slasher, by the way, as soon as he made loud noise in water, he's assuming that he got heard because of how loud he was, but I think he actually had the information advantage. There's the tags from Skies. Just a matter of moments. Skies could have gotten it done. Pharaoh just on the other side of that train cart as well, so one to one. And if you can, can catch it, look at Skies. Now nah, you won't be able to see it. He's running a pistol with this little signature on the bottom. There it is. <laughs> Nice and fancy. Looking good. Looking good. And I will say, though, obviously the information advantage didn't really mean much towards the end because it's still a 1v2, but the prep work, I'm pretty sure, from Optic Gaming has been on point. Obviously, the first round was timed perfectly, and then even have Slasher like, knows exactly where to look for where Fair is going to be coming from. So Optic Gaming, uh, obviously both teams, I'm sure, have, but have clearly done their homework. For M4 and Vents. I'm not sure if anyone's going to make the play. Kenny's timing here. Great shots for Pharaoh because that first blood gets the kill bomb. Going to be going down away at A as well. Oh, wow. That nade would have been great as well. Pharaoh not able to catch TJ. Definitely a player there, though. So he tries to reposition. Pharaoh just hold that line. He's going to hold it. Big tags on TJ. TJ tries to come back for a little bit more. Good luck from Slasher. Making this a little bit easier as they can for Optic Gaming on the push. Now, Pharaoh will have it because he's making his way from behind. Good job from the dead silence. Gets the second as well. Lovely work. 20 seconds remaining of the bomb. Sky's going to keep cutting these players down. OGLA now in a one versus two. And that is going to be that. Florida Mutineers. Cut them in half there on the offense.
And just making it look easy as well. Right? Like, it's not enough for Pharaoh, like, getting the first kill on Kenny and then having the perfect nade for where TJ was going that probably scared the man, but the flank for the double kill coming in from Havoc and then Skies with the patience, the perfect read. Protect your teammate. They're gonna hunt Havoc down. Just pre-aim. L trigger at that smoke. Someone's gonna be coming through. And really, Skies is the kind of player, when you watch him play, he makes this game just look so easy. It's all such simple stuff that he does, but he's always on point, always making smart plays. And you see, 7-0, not having too shabby of a game. Not at all. Havoc. <laughs> Gets caught from behind. Kenny's okay, first blood almost given to him. Crossy goes down as well. Nice start here from OGLA. Can Skies find any more kills? Keep this perfect record going. Quavo stun does land. Degree of information gained there. Skies backs on up. OGLA, very, very slow, methodical approach here towards the bomb site, not willing to give anything up. Draz is going to plant out wide in the open there. Number four in the flank, it's going to be just for a brief moment there. Skies now. And a one versus three. Can you find any more? I'm just going to keep trying to feed him kills. And the OGA, OGLA finally rounds. It's the first, 30 seconds remaining. He's on the hunt, Chunt. And <laughs> they really don't want to give those kills up. So Chunt's yeah, like, he, like, God, and Skies is doing everything so perfectly, too. Like, he is trying so hard, and Optic are just giving him nothing to work with. <laughs> but, like, everything is on point. And realistically, so far, pretty much all four rounds, it has just been purely, like, a, a, a counter. Just hard counters for every strat available. Like, that is Kenny knowing, like, hey, the doors are exploded. Havoc likes to play aggressive. Let me be cheeky and hide. Boom, first blood. Pharaoh's going to flank. He always plays that little off angle. Someone from Optic just sits there and waits for it. We've seen uh, the same thing from Florida, right? The very first round. They are sitting and waiting for the flank that they know is going to come through, and then they get the worst timing in the world. But the, the amount of prep work that these two teams seemingly have put in, uh, as good as it gets. Havoc. Nice shots to sell around off no kills. Awakening finds one. Trades go back and forth. As the bomb's going to reposition now and move all the way back out. It's going to be fair with that bomb. You can see him on the left-hand side of the mini-map making his way now towards the A site. Awakening's trying to make sure the middle of the map is safe. You've still got Skies watching towards that very, very long position over by Forrest as he makes his way forward. Now, number eight, Slasher. The only player really watching that A-bomb site. Neither team now really willing to make a big play, but it's going to be Awakening. Oh, with dead silence. There it is. Lovely bit of work as he goes forward. Perfect kill on a Kenny. Hollow, great long range shots there on the sky. So, 2v2. Pharaoh's just now started rotating this bomb, but of course, time, not the worst thing. 35 seconds is a, a decent chunk, but Optics seem very content with giving up the bomb plant, and he's planting for the left side. There it is, Awakening. He's trying to get this down position. It's going to be on Hollow, though. Dead silence. Oh, no, he played with his food. Pharaoh's eating him alive. Awakening gets the second as well. Florida, a nice win. And for a brief moment there, Hollow had eyes on. And he waited for a second. By the time he took the shots, Farrah had already completed the turn. Aims down sight. Guess the job done. Florida now take the lead 3-2. to two. Yeah, Farrah does that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> he is not immune to just uh, obliterating the opponent. And again, just another well-played round from both teams. But obviously, Florida got the better of them in that exchange. Just making sure to play the 3v2. Leave the bomb off to the side. Play for picks. Take your time with it. And get the job done. Another round we go. 10 kills for Skies so far. 10 and 2 overall. As all sorts is being thrown around across map. Solid B presence on the defense there for the Mutineers. Now Draza and OGLA. Trying to find something again. Expected positions. Awakening brilliant shots. Like every time. Very, very good stuff from him. Levels of playing field 4 versus 4. Awakening really is unreal at times. Optic, though, still playing very passive, waiting for a pick to come through. And of course, they're very concerned about the flank. But it doesn't look like anything's coming through. They're trying to get the bomb down. There it is. Bomb goes down immediately 4v4. There's plenty of members of the Florida Mutineers around. And here goes the push. Awakening Skies, Pharaoh coming in from the back. Frosty trying to make something happen through the front of the map. That's the smokes from Frosty. And it's pretty much perfect with TJ. Slashes him wide open. Awakening now. Still on the bomb site. Slasher hits the flank. There's the first. The second can't go his way. Awakening finds his fifth in a row. Two in the round so far. And now 
Two versus two situation. OGLA, 20 seconds to keep that bomb alive. Ferro, he's on the hunt forward. Check those corners. He's going to catch a silent hollow. And now it's on TJ. One versus two now with 10 seconds. Is he going to jump the bomb? There's the timing. It's so good from Awakening. Absolutely perfect search and destroy play. Oh my god, Woo. what a read. I mean that I mean that I have no idea what information they had on TJ. His last known location was over towards you. It makes sense for them to predict the back spawn, but I mean literally it could not possibly be better. I do not know how Awakening knows these things, but that was the only possible play. The teammate was not in a position to get the cover because he was covering green because he got to be worried about getting shot from the side because the bomb was planted on the left. There was maybe 20 other options. And Awakening, he just picked the right place. That is just fantastic work. Oh. S&D guru, apparently. And now, with newfound confidence, maybe a renewed sense of vigor. We're gonna go for it. Florida through the middle. Quavo and Draza pick up the opening kills. There's a quick trade there from Frosty before he goes down. Three versus four. Mutineers still on the prowl. Oh my god. He's, he's flying around so fast. It's like, do you see Draza just crouch walking through the middle of green there? Apparently not. Pharaoh, lovely shots to get another one there. Keep the bomb playing moving. Two versus three. Pharaoh and Skies. Now Skies, you can see in that position far out by Forest. We loves it here. Nice looking M4. Scribbled his name on it so he doesn't forget whose it is. Pharaoh can do the same thing. Nice kill for him. Five in a row. Six and three overall. 2v2. Now this is a very solid piece of work now from Pharaoh. Pick, picks up the kills. Trying to create noise. Trying to bait out something. And Skies is basically playing turret. Just trying to watch for anyone making those moves through mid. Ferro now, and he's covered a lot of the map in the last 30 seconds chance. Yeah, he's trying to make the big brain play, break and open the door, but Optic not near enough to hear. So turns out works beautifully for Optic. Now shots are fired. They know the B side is the play. You see TJ making the adjustment so he can kill the players off the cross and hollow. His job is don't die. Don't die just yet, TJ. Lovely shots. Can he catch another one across? No, Ferro gets the trade. Now it's a one versus one. Ferro versus hollow. 10 seconds. He's going to make the push for the kill. Got to get the bomb down if he possibly can. He's got to time this perfectly. Oh my God, the shots from hollow. He's not got enough time. He's not got enough time. But Hollow, man, his life flashed before his eyes there. <laughs> oh, my God. I want to listen to the comms so bad because I guarantee you when Pharaoh killed Slasher, the first thing Slasher did was check his ping. And I guarantee you in that final moment, he was saying, don't challenge, <laughs> run away, play it safe, throw the shoulder because Pharaoh, again, is just shredding people at the moment. Nearly pulled off the 2v4, but Hollow making a smart play in the Hollow end. was the living embodiment of that meme, you know, the baby that runs into the room and then goes, whoo, turns around and runs back out. That's what you just saw. <laughs> Frosty, though, okay. he is not a meme. He's going to be picking up his first kill of the round. He could have had room for a second there, but he didn't get greedy, and I love that. A nice nade from Draza, and a quick trade, as the mutineers are dealing as much damage as they possibly can on this A site. OGLA have certainly bitten off way more than they can chew. In this case of indigestion, is hurting them bad. 3v2 right now is Florida. They're on the hunt. They've smelt blood in the water. And they are about to get cracking with the knacking. TJ and Slasher. They're going to move through the map, try to find some kills, and maybe even pick up that bomb on the way out. But Mutineers all over it. The waiting game has been won. Pharaoh finds TJ. Yeah, you just see the positioning, it's too good. Pharaoh's watching the cross, he's standing on top of the bomb. He's got half the map covered by himself, and he's got two teammates for backup. Slasher, though, found the perfect angle. Could not quite find the kill, but 22 seconds. Time is ticking so fast. Florida has to make 17 mistakes, and Pharaoh, not about that life. He's making runs around, 16 seconds on the clock. The bomb still is going to be down, and someone's going to check it with just five left to go. Slasher, he knows that. He's trying to hunt him down, but Florida just running away too perfectly. They can hear all of this, everything Slasher is trying to do, and they get the job done. That is an example of a round that Florida knows how important this series is to bounce back because they are pulling out all of the stops to make sure they, they can get this win. Yeah, this is a chance to keep their back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back home series victories alive. They're not about to throw it away to OGLA here. Still, this is far from over chance. It's map point for the Florida Mutineers. How many more tricks up their sleeve are they willing to show? If any. OGLA now. Have overextended somewhat havoc. Snaps on the second. Awakening. Havoc gets three. Could we possibly see another ace 
from Colt Havoc. One more for the map. Damn it, Hollow! <laughs> Oh, now it's Hollow's turn for the 1v5 <laughs> in the ace of his own. 42 seconds, bomb planted, easy wins for the new player. Just kidding, it is basically impossible. Skies, though, does get obliterated. It's nice shots. Awakening, though, is going to close it out. <laughs> and the Florida Mutineers tie the series up. One to one. I mean, I'll say it again. Damn it, Hollow. <laughs> we were lining up for a real good one there, mate. God, if this was scripted, dude, if this was scripted, oh, it'd be so good, wouldn't it? But alas, the player's will prevails, and he will find that. But still, what a good search and destroy from the Florida Mutineers, man. That was a level of control that I have not seen from a team on Gunrunner like that in some time. Played OGLA like a fiddle. Yeah, it's one of those things that, like, when we were casting the, the Game 5 pick ability between these two teams yesterday, when it was, like, 5-4 in Optic's favor, those final two rounds, it really seemed like Florida just kind of decided, like, yeah, we're not going to lose. Like, <laughs> the way they played the rounds, it, it was just, like, so perfect. And it's the same thing. Like, you're watching the 3v1 where Slasher is just, like, flying across the map, being hyper-aggressive in Florida, not taking the gunfight, even if it's a 50-50 or they think they can win. It is dancing around the trains, making sure you get the trades, having perfect positioning constantly they went out of their way to make sure that nothing crazy was going to happen and that they could get the job done and then they had the five three lead and it was like havoc was like i'm free your guy's gonna let me do the thing all right i'm gonna go do the thing and then he did he, he did in fact do the thing picked up a nice little quad feed two for him in two days on the same map impressive stuff from the actual snd guru <laughs> true true snd guru stuff there but our us army tactical play is going to be from the other snd guru it's going to be from awakening and yes it was definitely that <laughs> round he picked up chance where he made the perfect reads on the tj Halley to clean up the kills and then get that bomb defuse with a fraction of a second remaining what a round from awakening and again, like, I would have to, like, watch the entire thing get played back, but I really don't know how much information other than the prediction. Like, TJ gets the kill in you. You're expecting him to wrap back around, but even still for Awakening, you got to worry about him, like, peeking from all the way the back, building off to the side. He can jump up over the truck, or he can peek from side green. Awakening took the guess, or just, like, he just knew. I don't know what it was, but perfectly timed, perfectly executed by Awakening. And that's the kind of play that, honestly, it's one of those things. A lot of these new rookies are making smart plays the entire time as well. Those are the guys that are getting the clutches. Uh, it is impressive to watch this sort of, like, new breed of Call of Duty player making big stuff happen. Yeah, really exciting stuff. And again, the dream's alive still for Florida to make the back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back home series championships. But we're all tied up one-to-one -one in the series so far. Coming up after the break, Dom, will it be a repeat of the first time these two teams met yesterday, or will we see a new champion crowned in this series? See you after the break. is brought to you by Metro by T-Mobile. Stay connected to what matters most with the best value in wireless.
sensational from the Optic. Kenny, lighten it up in range. Absolutely ripping his way through those players. The kills just don't stop for Dashi. Optic Gaming have done it. And it's Slasher. And suddenly the sweep comes in from Optic. TJ, the shots, he's only gone and got it. Thousands and thousands of hours of hard work lead to this moment. Once again, the Muneers, the teamwork is just exceptional right now. There's the clearance from the Muneers, and there's the win. Congratulations, not only do you win your third home series, Muneers have just taken over the COD League. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Call of Duty League. We're still here at the London Royal Ravens home series. We're coming to a close here, day two. It's going to be a very fun finish nonetheless. We've got a knockout match for you. We're 1-1 in the series so far. We've got the wonderful Florida Mutineers going up against the ever-rising and very hot on the streets right now, Optic Gaming Los Angeles. But chance tied up 1-1 in the series. A little bit of a surprise, not going to lie. It was a great start to the day, or to the series there for OGLA on Ramaza. How do we fare, though, now going into the Dom? Uh, I mean, certainly better than yesterday, right? I, I think that's the ultimate takeaway for me is just to, again, harp on the pick and bands as much as possible. Petrograd, not the place to be uh, against Florida right now. It doesn't seem like, at least not Optic, have that sort of answer. Mix the bag up, throw it to Hackney Yard, and even if they're maybe less confident on this map than Petro overall, I think they're going to be happy with the adjustment they made and be more confident going into the series. The issue is, for Optic, of course, the guns right now uh, on the side of Florida seem very hot, so obviously Optic can bounce back. They played incredible in the first hard point, but it really does have the makings in my mind to be, you know, if not a game five, basically as credibly close as it could possibly be for the next few maps. Yeah, it will be very, very close indeed. Now there's going to be a slight server change. This is why we have a tiny delay going oh. into this next one. So chance is going to be even more interesting going into this one. But don't forget, friends, tomorrow, not <laughs> only do we have CDL Sunday, which is full of fun, drama-laden games as per usual, but we also have another Warzone weekend match coming. This is the Kill Race Trios. The teams are battling for both eliminations, bounties, and much, much more. There are some fun little scoring additions into this one. We've got some very fun teams, rosters, lines up, you name it, everyone's going into this one. And it's not your usuals. And again, Krim plays Shotzi, you got after the Octane Proto, but you've got some fun mix and match squads in there, of course, methods attached. TJ, a little bit of everything here for the Warzone Weekends, presented by Metro by T-Mobile. Again, check that out tomorrow, CDL Sunday, 10 a.m. Pacific Time, 1 p.m. Eastern, here on youtube.com forward slash COD League. But you already knew that. You're already here. And you're watching through the COD League website because you want to get them sweet, sweet drops. Chance, have you got all the drops there? Have you managed to claim, like, claim those all? I, I'm going to be honest, no. I have no idea how stuff... I'm not... Dude, I'm the least technologically advanced person of like all the CDL talent. I don't even use my two-monitor setup. Like It's just... It's not for me. Technology... I barely even put gamma or camos on my guns. I'm just... I'm a, I'm a plain Jane, Miles. I apologize. I, I know, my friend, I know. Well, we'll have a quick look now at another graphic while we get ready for this matchup to start. And again, there is a server change happening, so the players got to move themselves across. It ain't as simple as it sounds, I'm sure. But the the heroes of June, the kings of June, if you will, the Florida Mutineers, they managed to turn the league on its head. Two home series wins there. Of course, Minnesota and Paris. Who could forget the one in Gay Paris? They've doubled their CDL points from 100 to 200. 8 and 0 overall. That's 24 and 9 in game records and a 1.11 team KD ratio. They they led the league. Unreal stuff. And don't forget how many game fuels Maven drunk in her in, in June alone. I think it was like, if we work out the math since April 11th, no, we're going to try it. A lot of game fuels went into our dear pal, Clint Maven Evans. The game is now ready. At this point in time, if we weren't socially distancing, these players would be fist bumping. You know the deal. I know I've seen Frosty actually fist bump the camera as a way to be like, you know, we're all ready to rock and roll. But Polo, I'm sure he's going to turn down the EDM get into this one honestly the lights i need to know i need to know let's get into this one Charles. i mean what do you need to know though he just likes it. maybe he does maybe it soothes him i know there's uh, something called chromotherapy which is uh where you use lights and colors to uh soothe the brain and soul chromotherapy yeah 2020 is crazy right not that I'm one to judge like Call of Duty pros, but I'm going to go with that. It looks cool. <laughs> I don't think it's deeper than that. I really don't think they're going for Chrome there to calm yourself before a match. Yeah. I just think like, hey, that looks dope. Let me get that.
<laughs> oh god. You probably paid a lot of money for chromotherapy. Jeez. Let's see here we go. Into the Dom. Hackney Yard as we know and love. Always fun, always crazy. Feels like we've seen a lot of these recently, let's be honest. Mutineers over by C. OGLA take the A flag. And if they get a little bit closer, there it is. Grab that B flag now. It's OGLA now. We'll have to do what they can to maintain this two cap control. A and B is really what you want here on Hackney Yard. And already out control is at least early on the way about the game. You see him pick up a couple kills, but now that they've got the clearance, they're moving forward. And Pharaoh, by the way, still shredding. He's on a four spree after the first life, but it looks like might not be enough. The 1v1 towards the end and Awakening actually gets help from his teammate. So overwhelming towards that B flag is Florida. They're going to get a lot of players onto that point, make the flag neutral and get the full cap very, very quickly. Now we're seeing the turn of events here for the Florida Mutineers. C and B almost in their hands. It's time for a very quick Astro Gaming listen in with the Florida Mutineers. I have them carrying now. One's the door, one's the door, one's the door. I need the door, I need the door. I got one. 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 Nice, I'm going top oh, he's fine, he's fine, he's fine, he's fine, Yo, one's there, milk's our car, 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 car. Yeah, 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 I got you. Yeah, I got it, I got it. Nice, good shit. Nading, nading, Oh, top, top E, top E, top E. I'm stay alive, I'm stay alive. On your stairs, on your stairs, challenge They can away, they can away. I'm here, I'm here, Hey, hey, weak, weak, weak. No, stay alive, there's yellow. Yo, one top top I'm going straight into B, I'm going straight into B. Yo, Caesar's cutting B3. I have I have I have I have I have on the tube, on the tube, I need help. Yeah, it's mid, 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 oh, mid, 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 I'm I'm one shot, one shot, one shot, one Going to our spawn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last guy's going to OGLA making things look good for the time being. And again, they've managed to change the spawns for now. You can see the Florida Mutineers spawning at the top end of the map. Gun fight not to be won for the longest time for Hollow there as he goes down at A. And Chance, I mean, anything from the comms that stood out to you, mate? Uh, again, it's just sort of clear cut. Like, there's nothing, like, too crazy. But everyone on the same page. Everyone doing the right thing. It seems like... I don't know what year of Call of Duty it was, but there used to be some teams in the past that like it would just be scrappy. But at this point in time, everyone is professional as can be. So just nothing but calm, clean stuff, you know? Yeah, I remember we used to get some mean listenings back in the day, World War II particularly. Of course, our brothers from the APAC region. Party mouths on them. Bless them. It was the best. And everyone's pretty, uh, everyone's in the zone these days. Everyone's really playing for the dubs, but who knows? A potential now for a trip cap from OGLA. They're going to finish A, make it theirs, and how long can they hold on for now? There's two players there circling around. Oh, Slasher, you could not have done it better. Well, actually, get the second kill. It may have just been that way, but C, no one's even close to it. No one's going for it whatsoever. There is the spawn from Pharaoh, and the shoes on the other foot right now is OGLA. This is the team that took the skin from Atlanta on this map. This is the team that drove them crying into the sort of action wheel, spraying love hearts on the wall. This is the team that broke Priester. And now, OGLA are taking them to the cleaners so far, Chance. Half the gaming, just, you know, trying to pick phase up a little bit, you know? Just to pick up the old arrival type thing. But either way, triple cap paid dividends. You just built yourself a very substantial lead. And more importantly, still got that two flag set up. So Florida, this is the sort of last ditch effort to try to get that B flag, to try to make sure that you don't go down by more than 30, 35 points after the first half. Whew, trying to get it done. Final 45. Slash this trophy makes short work. TJ Halley there, whether he can't get out of his hands. They're killing the team. Trophy's just giving Slasher a little bit of trouble today. Still, great work out of almost everyone there on OGLA. 12 and 9 for Hollow, 13 and 9 for Slasher, and 10 and 9 there for Quavo. And they're doing what they can to keep the kills department flowing. Final last Opti, by the way, got the, the C spawn as well, so they might be able to get a triple cap potentially in the final few seconds. Yeah, I mean, we've got mutineers here on B, providing just enough pressure, but when it rains, it pours for the mutineers right now, and it has not been a great half. A chance for them to turn it around towards the second, but as the whistle blows, a very, very good look from OGLA 
in this knockout series. Knockout series. If OGLA knockout our two-time, three-time champs overall, I don't, I don't know what to say. I'd be very surprised. Let's put it that way. I, yeah, no, it would be a sight to see, but like again, game five, round 11 yesterday, Optic has like really been proving their worth in the past two days. And more importantly, like it's the CDL points. Like beating Florida is nice for confidence, all that good stuff, but there's still a very real race between Optic and Paris with like three or four teams that are right behind them and no one wants to be in the loser's bracket for champs. So like in my mind, this is almost a, a series less about the individual matchup and really just about Optic doing everything they possibly can to make sure they get that clearance and that they don't start in losers. Really trying to make it happen. Nades come through. You name it. The kitchen sink all has arrived there on that B flag. Havoc through the smoke. Ah, I was going to say, TJ's in there with you. But he does finally get that kill. Awakening now from up high, trying to do what he can. The battle over towards the C flag has just about been won there by Frosty. So, trip cap. It's happening, and it could happen for quite some time if the kills can keep working out. There's a perfect spread of both teams across the map right now. Pharaoh win this 1v1. Oh, boy, that's big. A flag is changing hands, but oh, it could change in again in a moment. If you can stop this gunfight, it's going to be the Frosty to help out. Big shots with the MP5. Oh boy! Slow drives it down. Possible to get the kill now. There's only one member of OGLA really that close to the A flag. Here comes the spawners. And for the time being, they've managed to get out of this one. But the Mutineers chance. They held that for a decent amount of time. Can they do it again? I mean, they were just down by 40 at the half. They're only down by 24 now as it stands. So you talk about the perfect opening strat. Frosty went crazy over towards the C flag, but now off the gaming, they got what? Two players and the trophy actually out on this B flag. They're trying to capture that. Meanwhile, Draza trying to hunt the players down. Pharaoh makes the read. He gets the kill at A. And look at all those errors for the 40 Mutineers roaming towards that A flag. If they can get it, they will be in a fantastic spot potentially for the rest of the game. Yeah, potentially, but look at the kills as well. Try to flip the spawns and hollow. Patient not patient enough he goes down that's the spawn slip OGLA now spawning towards C flag quick grab a C reinforce that position at B he can still keep this going but oh man Florida be in his they are doing everything they can to try to turn this Hackney Dom on its head DJ Halley nice shots to try to support the boys here down by that B flag Havoc's gonna make his way forward hollow work great snap that was beautiful shots Keep himself good in the hood. And this is going to be the C flag made neutral there by Frosty. In and out he goes. Sneaky, annoying. A great play to make at this time. Guys up top, he is in prime territory. He's waiting for the kills to come to him. The first he's able to connect with. And well, you get this man set up, the 1v1s, he doesn't lose them very often in Florida. It took him an extra minute and a half to make it happen. They've been down by 20 for that long, but they finally secure the B flag. And now they finally get the setup they want. Potentially Havoc might make another play over towards the C flag. Florida has been pouring it on with these overextensions. Let's go, he just ran the length of the entire map on his own. He does have someone to contest from there, so that could have been it. He's so, so close to getting it done, but he will be brought down just in the nick of time. However, the OGLA player that left that one, TJ, he only got the flag down to a just over 50% captured. So if he should, should so choose to go back for it, there is a chance they can make that capture still work out. And what do you know? Awakening's already on it. Look at that minimap, number one. Could not care less. He's just run across. Frosty and Co. winning the gunfights here on the B flag, trying to hold that one safe. This is the makings of another trip cap. OGLA, they didn't do their dishes. They've left them in the sink, and that's it. Trip cap for now. Get the, Oh, no. I'll take it all back. Go for the neutral. Get the full cap. No. Quavo's there. Take it all back. All that excitement for nothing. It's done. Domination's mad, isn't it? It is, and now it's just a nine-point lead for Optic Gaming, who are spawning at C, but trying to sprint over towards A, because Florida have managed to bounce back, but now you get TJ that gets through, he gets dealt with as Awakening picks up two massive kills, and for Optic Gaming, they really just need to find a way to get one of the two flags, but you might just want to commit everybody, and then Awakening spawns at C, this means a neutralization, it's a five-point game, it's a minute and ten left, at least the neutral comes in, if not the triple cap Florida from a 40-point deficit has all but tied this game up, and might just start running away with that. That's going to be it. They've taken the lead for now. Draza, big wins there on B. Are they going to be able to get the kills in towards that C flag? Yes, they do. OGLA can stop the bleeding for now. Now Hotlow going for a trip cap of his own. Pharaoh's there to stop him in his tracks. However, C and B in the hands of OGLA now. There's a chance. The final minute of this map. This is going to be crazy. And finally, OGLA. Quavo, he gets the kills there over by C. He manages to stop the overextension from Awakening. He did it, what, three times? No, he spawned there! Oh, what is that? No! Ah! Speechless!
35 seconds. It's 35 seconds, right? They're going to get that. Optic Gaming, maybe they're just going to have to fly forward. You got number 7, TJ. He's trying to back towards C. Awakening, though, might make the read. He knows where they're going to spawn, but they've run past each other. Oh my God. Now you get the fight on C. Two players on Optic on A, and you got Pharaoh on B. 20 seconds this left. This could happen. Okay, he's made it neutral on C. Pharaoh's trying to make the play at B. Up over the top. It's going to be Quavo goes down. Here comes OGLA. They've got to make this play work out big, and they've got to go do it right now. Final 10 seconds. Get it on the flag. They secure C. There's the kill. Skies doesn't die. How's it going to go? A couple of ticks. It's going to tick over, and I think the Mutineers may have done it. They may have just done it, Chance. Oh my word. What a dumb, crazy dom that was. <laughs> <laughs> okay, dude, you got the adjectives on point, let me tell you. 2-1. From down, yeah, from down 40 points, bro. From down 40 points, you win by three. They had like 55 at the half. They get 157 by the end. That was 37 overextension, 17 neutralizations, about six or seven spawns right on top of that C flag. Custom made to make sure Florida will not let that game <laughs> run away from them. And talk about the amount of frustration Optic have to be with that of just every 30 seconds you're calling out, dude, someone got through. They're on the yeah. C flag. We got to go back. Dang it, Frosty's there. He killed me. Now someone else has to get it. It's just a constant pouring it on. Florida, they just Ugh. found some wizardry to make sure they get that. This is the final 30 seconds of the Dom. I mean, this was another great run from Awakening. Get over there to see. Grab it for a few moments. We watched TJ, number seven, make his way there as well. Now, the, the 1v1 fight they have here is... Well, actually, they don't. This is pre that moment, that the crazy moment. I mean, the most heartbreaking moment, again, Quavo finally makes the read. Kenny makes the read on the player at sea, and he gets there in time to kill him. He kills him, he runs a few steps, and Awakening spawns within what? Six meters of where he died next to that sea flag. <laughs> That's like how is six meters is it's barely any feet. I, I can't, I'm not going to do the conversion, but it's really bloody close. He spawns there. He's right next to sea. It is just so frustrating. I mean, the, there's so much OGLA had to do there. There's so much they had to do to make that work out. The COD gods certainly smiled upon the Florida Mutineers today. I'll see you on Reddit, my friend. What a crazy series this really is. And I feel like I'm going colorblind. Like there was like, like 20, 25 seconds left and I'm like looking at the map and I was like, all right, there's a blue character on the green flag over on C flag. <laughs> there's a blue guy on a white flag over here with like two green arrows surrounding him. And then the C flag, I think was blue with two green arrows and just surrounding. And it was like my mind trying to process that towards the end. Like, yeah, we need like a slow-mo button in COD. Just like hit the slow motion so I can sit there and process everything going on in domination at the same time. Cause that had to have been one of the crazy, I mean, it was one of the crazy sense we've had a domination all year and again that is difficult to cast that is difficult to watch I can see all 10 players constantly and it's tough for me to keep track of yeah. trying to play in that situation <laughs> has got to be absurd it's very stressful there's no doubt about it I mean at one, yes. at one point words failed me and I just had to sort of let let fly a scream because you, you, it's really that's a, that's a tough one for a GLA they did a lot right there uh, but hey Florida Mutant is they take the lead in the series 2-1. Now it's an Azir cave hardpoint. Dude, this oh, yeah. is going to be fun. First time we've seen the new look OGLA here on Azir. Um, actually, the first time I've seen Florida in quite some time play this map. I'm not sure about that one. Stat is one I've thrown in you in the last minute. But what a series this truly is. I know one thing for certain. I'm going to be sleeping like a baby tonight, my friend. I don't know about you. But uh, yeah, a very, very good one. The London Royal Raven home series. Not been without its drama. Not been without its exceptional moments. I mean, it's more lit than Hollow's room right now. Let's go. The game's starting, Chance. Here we go. Sweet. As here cave. In his ear cave. I, I want to see some grouse. I, I yeah. think like someone's going to end up pulling it out, but I, I think it's one of those things. I don't have a recollection uh, of Florida playing this map recently and trying to think about that meta switch of Azir yeah. Cave was already at times like a 3AR map. Now that's a guarantee uh, effectively with all the, the nerfs that have come through to the MP5. So it would be an interesting look. A, a lot of these times, all these hardpoint maps is sort of those SMG battles. Who can make the, uh, the bigger plays thrive to find that success? Well, now the tides turn just a little bit. So normally for the side of optic gaming right it, my focus at least starting yesterday was on draza how good is he going to be now in my opinion it is going to be hollows time to shine oh we'll see we're almost ready to get in this one it's been a while chance since i've been on azir cave i think maybe the first time we've been on azir cave together hope you were sunblock here we go dude azir cave another fun one very assault rifle heavy map before the meta change even more so now 
Central hardpoint. Always a mean one. Lots of open lines of sight towards it. Kills mostly going the way of the Florida Mutineers to begin this one off before getting themselves into that hardpoint. The Hollow's going to try to make that a little bit harder for Frosty, but not too hard. Frosty's taking down more formidable foes in his time. And there's a quick contest. It's going to go down immediately. Quavo's going to be there to try to find a few more. Awakening will get that kill. And again, what the players right now, they're not necessarily aiming for that first hard point. It's all about the second. Cave East towards that right-hand side of the map. That's the priority right now. Yeah, that's why you saw Frosty at the start playing so passive. It was almost like a standoff of like, hey, if they're not on the hard point, I'm not forced to come out. I think there's going to be a player oh. nearby. I need to make sure I keep these kills and keep that control because after gaming, starting that push, Draws is able to pick up two along the way in Skies. Yes, he drops Draws, but he gets taken down himself. Looks like Opti Gaming, maybe not enough pressure towards the back side, but they still had a fairly decent first hard point, 20 point lead, and they have the nice little setup. They're hitting from every single angle. Effectively, they sort of have Florida trapped. It's a bit of a trap right now, but I mean, Florida, they're trapped in the right place. You know? it's, it's a panic room, if you will. They're pretty safe and sound now, as long as they don't open the door and let those uh, home invaders in. There's Draza trying to battle his way forward, and it's very, very tough to fight their way through Cave right now. There's assault rifles lined up. Draza can't get anything done. It's a firing squad right now from the Florida Mutineers. They're going to cut him down immediately. Slasher trying to get involved. Awakening on his belly there in the hard point. Picking up time and kills. Quavo now trying to fight his way forward as well. And it's just pandemonium in the hard point, dude. Whether it's nades. Sparrow has come out of that one relatively unscathed. And with five kills in a row, there's 20 seconds remaining here on Cave East. We move over to the soccer field. Not much of a soccer field. I think there's a mortar lying in the middle of it. But hey, man, you make do with what you've got. Quavo and OGLA already propped up in position to contend with a push now from Florida. Slasher, you talk about getting the perfect timing on the read oh. and wins the first and knows the second might be there. Slasher ahead of the game, unfortunately, was not paired for number three or number four that ended up spawning right on top of them. So Optic in control, but Florida have the spawns they want. Your Quavo now. This is the battle for the soccer field development slowly. Florida going to get in there. TJ moving forward. Quick contest. Not an easy place to chill out. Draza nice shots up close. Gets it done there with MP5. It's not an easy place to hold the soccer field. There's a bit of high ground to work with there. There's Draza. Doing a good job of keeping the flank safe. That open door. In prime position to try to take care of those players. It looks like Ferro actually fell off the map there. Could have been intentional. Yeah, doing his best Clayster impression. Hey. <laughs> That soccer field finally going to the hands of Florida Mutineers for now, but there you go. A little bit of hard point time goes their way. Cave West coming up next. Number four and number eight on the minimap. Towards that top side of the map. They are going to be the ones going for it already. OGLA throwing two players in towards this one. Ferro makes the perfect read. We can find TJ as well. Oh, wow. Wow, no. TJ's going to get it done. Good looks now from OGLA, but the trades are going to start coming through. Can TJ hold on alone? Not for too much longer. Draza now. Good timing. Not good enough on the shots department, though, as it looks like, yes, it is. The Florida Mutineers, they're going to get the first bit of control there of Cave West. I can talk about how much fun right now the Florida ARs are having. Look at the feed oh, skies oh, oh, oh. with three in a row. Awakening is the, the flex sort of man. He's able to pick up a bunch as well. And now this is skies in prime territory. Give him a head glitch, let him post up, and he is very tough to take down. He's tagged up quite a bit, and Hollow gets the job done. And Optic, there you go. The break might be in. Havoc, the last man alive. Slasher able to drop him with the pistol. The break successful. Final 25 seconds likely going the way of Optic. And now even Draza. On the flip side, up top is the one player, which somehow he did not get hurt. The dead silence, not even necessary, apparently, and a massive gunfight he's able he to win. He does manage to push that dead silence back now to full. Frosty, good nade, Draza now in a very difficult situation. Frosty's trying to go for this fight, trying to find him through the wall. Again, bullet penetration just strong enough, Draza. A little bit of help from his friends. He's still alive. Draza has somehow managed to slip through. He's still good there. What's he gonna do at the top of the ladder right now? Is he gonna kill him? He will, Draza's still there. Oh man, it took a lot to bring him down. That was Rambo first blood there. They really sent the whole town after him. They couldn't quite find it, but there we go. OGLA with a little bit of hard point time here by Cliff Path. This is a very difficult hard point to hold. This guy's managed to find four. Not before being taken down in a vicious hail of shots there from OGLA. 30 seconds remaining on this hard point chance, and no one has really been able to get too much out of it. It's been so heavily contested for both sides. And this map really is an assault rifle player's paradise. 
Hey, yeah, and it was wild too, because honestly, I thought Jaza made like one of the better plays we've seen this weekend, just being annoying, because there was three players at, at one point from Florida just trying to deal with him, and he bought his team so much time, and maybe Optic didn't get a ton of time on this hill, but hey, they did enough. They've maintained that lead. It's going to be about 30-point advantage they have, and they have the future spawns, a very good spot they find themselves in, but I still think they're going to need to pick it up in the slang just a little bit more. And don't forget, this is a knockout map for OGLA. They need to win this in order to force the game five and have a fighting chance at staying in the Ravens home series. And what have we found from Hollow there? Final 40 seconds of this hard point looking pretty good for OGLA. I mean, it's all green from here on out, Chance. It feels like that. They've got the right hand side of the map covered. Pharaoh with a nice big kill. And again, you open up this lane, it gives you a chance to run down that cliff path and try to run in that back door entrance to the cave. What can Slasher do now through the smoke? Not a whole lot. Good kills going the way of the Florida Mutineers. Will this give them enough numbers and map presence to force their way in towards Cave East? Oh my god, Pharaoh. Actually, fell off. very aggressive. He's you know, almost going for the twofer, but not only he gets that kill, that means Havoc gets around back for free, and MP5s might be tough on this map, but if you get a guy like Havoc in this sort of spot, he can definitely do some damage. Draws a pretty to the back thing, but Havoc is going to shred the second guy right next to him. Please finish the kill. His teammate does it for him, and the break on Cave East is successful. Florida, they made some magic happen. Operation Cave Break completed. Florida, that was a huge play. Hard point time now, gonna be all theirs. All they need to do is keep OGLA back. Hold the line, Florida. Time and time again, we've seen them in these sort of positions, and man, Florida, they get it done. Pharaoh still slaying like a maniac. 22 and 13, I believe, at the end there. Another five spree to him. And this hard point, we're gonna see that one change. Skies with a nice two there on Aquavo and Draza. Awakening picks up where his teammate fell, and they move on forward. This is a fantastic hard point, and we're looking towards another good one right now for the Florida Mutineers, as they've managed to not only take up all the time here in Cave East, they've cut the map nest well, basically in half, and they've got themselves in position now to contest with the next soccer field as well, Chance. Brilliant turn of events for the Mutineers. And Awakening again, AR number three on this squad. He's just been posted up for quite some time, so at least the power position's at the start by way of Florida, but TJ not able to finish the gunfight. You see Awakening's able to pick up two, and Florida ends up getting someone over towards the left side, so that's hill control. That is maybe, what, 80 points seemingly in a row from the side of Florida, completely turning this game on its head. Still holding that line. 40 seconds remain. This is a big chunk. Hollow with a nice couple of kills there. Slasher from upstairs gets taken down. Brilliant positioning from Awakening. Not quite enough to get it done. Quavo, nice hop on the trigger. He goes immediately though. Havoc through the smoke. Brilliant shots again. Skies wins the upload battle there with the M4. Can he hold on for much longer again? Trying to find as much time as they possibly can from the soccer field. Again, it's an open hard point. Not too dissimilar to the first. Power position is completely surrounding it. It's a great deal of control to maintain solid holds here. Over we go, the PIP. You can see that picture in picture. That's going to be Cave West already being set up there by the Florida Mutineers. Not a whole lot of optic presence there already. As we go now, back into the cave. Havoc, he's going to be up top with that MP5. Trying to create a split push now from not only the east side of the cave, but also from the outside of the cave here in Skies with that M4. Just ripping folks off this one. Draz is in a world of hurt. TJ's not going to be much better. And Polo, come around that corner. Awakenings here. Unbelievable shots up close. He's caught these players out. A third in a row. That's his fifth in the spree. Awakening 29 and 17. That's disgusting. And I, I'll be honest, man, 220 to 159, I'm actually surprised the game is even this close. I think after are doing a fantastic job of doing whatever they can, because when you look at the kills, Pharaoh Awakening in Skies as that AR trio are just obliterating in the kill feed. That's number 32 for Awakening. He's on a three speed. It's like the 18th time he's done that this game, it feels like. You got Pharaoh, obviously, uh, what, 29, and then Skies has 30 as well. So near triple 30 bombs from one side. The highest amount of kills on the flip side is Kenny with 23. This is just a, a different class, a different breed. Florida with the ARs, that trio right there, were too much for Optic to handle. And that is the, the nail in the coffin of Optic Gaming's tournament run. And there it is. The new kids on the block couldn't quite make enough of a difference when it came down to it. And it really was an insane series. But at the end of the day, there can be only one. I think I went 3-2 Florida. 
3-1 was the final result there. OGLA commiserations again. Tremendous improvement though, Chance. Truly tremendous improvement from the squad. It was a very, very good look from them from start to finish. Again, a difficult opponent in the form of Florida Mutineers. If anyone was going to be able to get it done relatively quickly, it was always going to be them. But that's it. Commiserations again to OGLA. Congratulations to the Florida Mutineers. They're going to Sunday. Yeah, that's just a, a tough tournament, honestly, from Optic, right? Like, you come in, you just get beat by Florida twice, and that's the only reason you're only able to get 10 points. That is a, a rough sort of setup that they had. But then, of course, on the flip side for Florida, obviously there's a long way to go they did get reverse swept earlier so there's a lot of potential for craziness but they just seem to have like that switch of they just kind of decide not to lose like again they had a, at some point we're down by 30 40 points it, it seemed like on a z or cave and where optic had like 145 something like that and then the next 150 points basically in a row go the way of florida every single player on that team at different times if it's an ar map ars are going crazy if it's any map barrel's going crazy and if it's snd it's some point havoc is going to kill everything in sight still a, a well-oiled machine and of course florida they just want to get revenge man they, they're not happy about the l that they took L or earlier today as our scuff player of the game now it's going to of course be awakening one of his many beautiful three pieces he found within those caves and yeah man it was a good good look and i had my doubts i'm not going to lie about the way florida would look in this new meta i wondered if they had a strong enough third ar to keep presence on oh, the map baby. But oh baby, that's not a problem anymore. I'm pretty happy with this one. Awakening, finding the opening, catching those players and doing, I mean, that last kill on the Quavo. I mean, obviously was rather weak in that engagement. Only took one or two to get it done. But there we go. The stage is now set for Sunday. And what a series we have got ahead of us. Royal Ravens versus Paris Legion up first, followed by Empire Mutineers. I mean, let's face Oof. it. If you're a Royal Ravens Oof. fan, shout out to all the uh, to the European viewers who stayed up this late. I think you can see, you can feel pretty confident, I would say, very confident in in one sense that you've got a good chance of getting London to a finals finally again. But Paris Legion have been turning heads, surprised us all round. A very surprising three against the New York Subliners. Tomorrow is going to be a very fun one, chance, mate. What a great day it's been. Cannot believe it's over now. Feels like a long one, doesn't it? But crazy, crazy. And again, when we come back after the break, we're going to have a quick chat again. Our PlayStation is reaction with somebody there from the Florida Mutineers. Again, myself and Chance, thank you very much. It's going to be Frosty Orlando up next. We'll see you after the break. See you tomorrow.